and welcome back to the channel. Um, five things we've learned. Five things we've learned. I have got five this time. It's not going to quite be a half an hour episode. It might be. You never know. Uh, it's all going to be off the cuff. I've got the the, the, the the bullet points and everything that I need to, to, to go by. But I, th I like the premise of this, the format of this um, series where we go through uh, everything now in hindsight. Um, based on the game we've just played. I didn't do it for Man City, but I've done it for uh, Arsenal and I did it for Everton as well. Um, so as always, please do like the video, subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the bell notification to be notified of any future content on the channel. And with that said, um, it's uh, it's been a couple of days um to, well a day and a half realistically uh where we've had to sort of digest calm down as well a little bit based on uh, obviously the ending of the game was a little bit more um i don't know it, it it wound a lot of us up it really did including myself uh probably more so than most <laughs> if you've seen uh, my reaction i don't know i feel like it was the same as most people would have been in terms of like uh like <laughs> pure jubilation to just oh no <laughs> no 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 but yes 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 um it was disallowed uh disassi robbed um but a few other things happened during the game that i'm going to go into uh throughout this episode um so uh, with that said number one is uh right away from the get-go uh, you thought we conceded early against arsenal uh, last Tuesday, and 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 then you, you, we just go and double down, really, um, doing exactly the same thing, conceding early, um, equaling an uphill battle as as has proven to be the case uh, over the last um, pff, well couple of games now for sure. Uh, four minute own goal. I still I don't think I've actually seen the goal back necessarily, but um, I probably should. <laughs> I probably should. Um, it was more so the remainder of the game that, that was, uh, you know, up for analysis, up for debate. But it was a completely... Um, throughout the season, it's been just like totally avoidable goals, isn't it? Whereas this one, it just seemed like we were completely overwhelmed, completely overrun. And more or less, if I'm not mistaken, very similar um, sort of on the back foot straight away, like like Gilchrist found himself with the first goal for Trossard against Arsenal last Tuesday. Um, it, it just seems like we don't come out of the out of the gates rearing and ready to go um, over the last couple of games. I don't know if that's down to being knocked out of the FA Cup, but you would think, you would assume. You would assume that 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 now we haven't got an, a direct uh, possibility to to to, to um, you know qualify for Europe with, uh, unless we somehow pull something out of the bag um, in, in the league. The FA Cup's gone. The Carabao Cup's gone. You think the players would be up for the occasion? Which you know I I, I go into a, bit, a little bit more of it later on. Uh, in one of my other points, but I, I just briefly touch on it. It's, it's sort of like there's, there's no, it never bodes well. It never bodes well, especially when we concede first, especially if we concede two goals. This game was an anomaly in the sense of, um, you know, we, we faced adversity, which isn't for the first time this season, but often, more often than not, it just doesn't end well for us. It doesn't bode well for us in the end. Um, so for that, again, I'll go straight into my final point. It's not really in any order necessarily, but the point that was on all of our minds, uh, you know, at the end of that game was that VAR robbed us. It did. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much more um, because we've seen it a million times. I still think that we were robbed. Um, and I, I've stressed more and more, more often than not that if something comes up where I think we've been given you know, we've, we've become a little bit lucky or whatever. Penalties, for instance, was my example. We, we, we were just given uh, a couple of penalties at least this season where I thought, if that was the other way around, I'd be livid. I'd be absolutely fuming. My argument for this is the, the referee was right there, didn't give it. Not clear and obvious because he, he in his... Infinite wisdom, his 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 you know in, in his experience saw it straight on. Didn't see it as a foul. VAR saw it as a foul. He was made to go over, checked it for about a second, and then it was given. The other points I made were that um, 
you know, the, the, the player himself, I think it was Concer, I could be wrong, didn't raise his hand once. And I know people are like, yeah, but it doesn't mean it's not a foul. Chances are he, he would have thrown himself to the ground, typically, but he didn't. Um, he would have raised his arms. Players around him would have raised his arms. The, the, the fans behind the goal, who were Villa fans, didn't raise their hands at all as well. No one called for the free kick. Not a single person called for a free kick. Um, I also, my, 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 my other point being, if it was the other way round, at that time in the game, I think it was more so to save Aston Villa from like a, a heartbreak situation because it's, it's so subjective. I think if it's the other way round, however, and Konsa goes into the back of Baddy Ashil like that, one, Baddy Ashil would go down, but also Baddy Ashil, it wouldn't have been given as a penalty. It would not have been given as a penalty if, if Baddy Ashil stayed on his feet is what I'm trying to say. It wouldn't have been given as a penalty. And, and, and again, we couldn't sit here and moan until we're, you know, we're blue in the face at like this, this should have happened, that should have happened. Um, and, uh, you know, we should have been given this and not given that. And, that, you know, I, at the very core of it, at the very, you know, the foundation of it all, uh, VAR robbed us. I really truthfully believe we should have got all three points. I do think um, in some worlds a draw probably justified, but uh, I mean, we'll go through the stats in just a second um, and have a look, but the, but the boys showed fight. The boys showed uh, fight and determination despite going 2-0 down. Um, they, they did show that they can bounce back when, when I said they couldn't. I did it in the preview. I, I, I said that definitively this team doesn't have an ability to fight back or, or to fight adversity. And they did. They did. And they should have got the reward of the third goal. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. We'll go into the uh, statistics for this game. And, and you, can, you can see 29% possession for, uh, for Aston Villa. And I know, again, people will argue, well, possession doesn't win games. And if there's ever a team that can surely, um, you know, ring that fact home is uh, definitely Chelsea Football Club. Because this season, uh, especially, to, especially at the beginning of the season, more so than now, we've had 70% possession more often than not and still managed to lose or draw or just about win. But for the most part, possession does not win a game for Chelsea Football Club. Um, but my, my point to this would be domination was certainly something that it did. It may not have felt like it during the game, but overall in hindsight, again, which is the point of this show, of course, um, we did dominate. We did, we did. And there were other reasons for that as well. Villa's injuries. This is my third point. Villa's injuries, uh, changed the game a fair bit. Obviously, uh, Yuri Tillemans going off. Um, and then shortly after that, in terms of second half, uh, it was uh, Emmy Martinez coming off for, who was it? It was um, Olsen came on for, for Aston Villa to go in goal. And, and that changed the game massively. It really did. 21 shots on target for, um, for, for well, sorry, 21 shots in general. Um, for Chelsea. I don't know if there's like a way to see what, what happened in each half, but um, second half, there we go. We can see um, we had 13 shots, 13 shots. We only had eight in the first half and one on target. Second half, 13 shots, four on target. So uh, Tielemans coming off obviously had a, had a massive impact. Uh, I, I felt like they, they had a good control of the midfield for the most part, up until he went off. And then Caicedo, which leads on to my fourth point, Caicedo ran the midfield uh, for the majority of the game. Great tackles, great passing. One of his best performances so far this season, um, I, I would suggest. Um, again, I I linking in with this, um, big chances, fouls. It's, it's no surprise, Caicedo. Um, not so much in the big chances, but Caicedo. Well, I don't know, because he did... He, he was a, a, a catalyst with his tackle that led to, um, I think, the Madueke goal, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but 
two, two, two big chances, two big chances missed. I must, I must um, clarify. Uh, but 14 fouls to 13 fouls, it makes no, it, it's, it's really no surprise. <laughs> I do believe, I do believe that, um, that, that Caicedo had uh, a fair few of those. He was in the book, but at the same time, the, you know, the, um, the, the yellow card he received, albeit a, a, a much more, what's the word? The obligatory yellow card is the way I used to, I, I always call it. Five fouls, he's, he's, he, he made one successful tackle out of five. Um, so, <laughs> you know, not necessarily all leading to fouls, but he's, he's, uh, his, his tacklings, he, he had his, he was involved a lot more. And he, he is one of those players who I, I feel like I haven't necessarily given him the props that he deserves because he might not be as prevalent and as involved as other players who make a bigger impact in, a, in an attacking sense. Whereas with Caicedo, I feel like he was more involved um, throughout the game where he, he, he has a massive impact. Whereas he can have fantastic games and completely be lurking in the background doing his thing. Jorginho-esque sort of situation. John Obi Mikel sort of situation and so on and so forth. Um, but I, I thought, honestly, really, really good game from him and uh, pure, pure domination from Chelsea um, from, I'd say, the second goal. The second goal, probably from the second half. Pochettino definitely had... Um, one of the more visible uh, changes in tactics that we've seen where, where we can actually see there's, there's like a change, there's a definitive change and it worked. Kukurea was, was completely um, changed in, in what he was being implemented to do over the first half to the second half and so on. Um, with that said, those are my four, four points so far, I think. One, two, three, four, five. I've got five points. My last one, and I don't want to ring on this too hard, but it is getting a bit worrying now, I do think. And I, I think people giving the benefit of the doubt far too often now. Um, and the fact that he is becoming more and more of a, 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 you know, way more game time, way more first team appearances um, and... Uh, Frustrating player to, to, to watch, to say the least. I will give him props. 18 out of 23 accurate passes, 78% accuracy. Um, three chances created. Uh, for me, I, he's just not good enough at the, mo at the moment. At the moment. He is not good enough at the moment. Um, and and I know you could say that for a few players. I think Madaweke has moments where you think like he's, he's just not, he's not there. A loan deal would probably do him well. Um, but at times you also see it and you think it's there, it's there, it is there. For the for Mudrick, I don't even see personally, uh, and believe me, I, I all all the prop, all the uh, excitement behind him joining, especially joining us over Arsenal and so on, all all of that. He was one of the one player. He was one of the players I was most excited to see, and I'm not by any means counting him out. I'm not writing him off and saying like this is this is it. He's gone. We've got to sell him. Whatever. I do, however, think a loan move would be of great, just fantastic uh, value to a player like him who who clearly is clearly clearly, and I want to emphasize clearly, clearly out of his depth when he plays in the Premier League. Um. I just don't think he's ready whatsoever. I watch him and I, I, and I, I tweeted it. It might seem harsh, but I stand by it. I, I think he is easily one of the worst players I've seen play for Chelsea um, on a on a game to game basis. There, of course, of course, there are qualities in him that can be utilised in the future, but he, he's just not ready for this side uh, or, or for this league. I don't think shooting is just not in his arsenal at the moment. Excuse the pun, but it's just not in his nature to be. A... But you see him for Ukraine and he scores screamers. I don't understand how that shot, I've got it in the the 38th minute, got round a player and you think, oh my God, this is a great chance. No one closing him down, not even remotely under pressure. Takes maybe one or two steps more than he should have. And he blasts it, and 
it nearly, it very, it might as well have gone for a throw in. It went for a goal kick, I think. It, it hit the, the 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 corner flag, whatever. But the point I'm trying to make on with that is that that's not the first time. That is not the first time. It's not the second time. It's not the third, and it certainly won't be the last time. I don't think that that Mudrik does that sort of thing. And I and I do think those shots, those misses, are a key example of a player who. It's so overwhelming for him, I think. I think the pressure's too much for him at the moment. I do think we can mould him into a, a, a fantastic player. Of course, there are there are glimpses where you think, like, oh, my God, there it is. There it is. That's the, that's the, 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 the class. That's the, the, um, the quality that we saw in that brief moment in, uh, against Liverpool at the beginning of the season, um, which now seems like an eternity ago. But... Uh, th this thing of, you know, he, oh, he doesn't get enough game time, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that, but then when he does, he doesn't make the most of his his, his time, I don't think. I saw people defending him, as, as they always do, uh, saying, I don't think he had as bad a game as people think he did. He was not good. It was not a good performance. It was, it was a, a, a very clearly poor performance, I would say. Um, I think the, stat, uh, the stats definitely give him, you know make it look better than he actually played. I'd see people doing props of him clearing the ball away. And, and, and that's like how much of a stretch he's gone, because let's be honest, he's not a defensive player. So the fact that in prop videos, we're seeing him getting a prop for, you know, cl just clearing the ball away and just, and it's not like it, <laughs> he's just booting it. It's not, it's, you know, he's, he's just in the right place or, or he's in the place to be, to clear the ball away. But so many times it's like the, the the passing's not there, the finishing's not there, the runs aren't there, the ball knowledge to know where to run at the right time and so on, it's just not there. He is an unbelievably frustrating player to watch and uh, more often than not detrimental to, to um, progressive play and forward running play. Again, I wanna preface, I wanna cl uh, clarify, I, I do think he has all the qualities of being a fantastic player. Um, I just, he just looks so out of his depth every time he gets on the ball. He looks so nervous. He looks visibly nervous when he's on the ball. So all this criticism I'm giving him, I don't want it to, I was very harsh about him on the, but it was in the moment on the stream. I was saying, yeah, you know, the, this and the, that nothing personal against him. I just, he is it, it just in the heat of the moment. It's just not good enough. <laughs> it's just not good enough. In uh, in hindsight and in time to calm down, I'm just saying this in as polite a way as possible. He is not good enough right now. I think he can be in the future. And I really hope he will be as well because he, he, he seems like a, a fantastic player. Um, he seems to be one of the few players that actually puts in more time after uh, training to to better himself, whether if that if that's just in the gym or not. Clearly needs to, I think, I don't know, maybe put a little bit of size on because he does just get beat off the ball like so easily. But seems like such a nice guy as well. That's the that's, that's even even harder to like have a go at him because it oh god, he's so nice, isn't he? <laughs> it's oh bless him. Bless him. And you just want him to succeed so much, don't you? Um, but it just seems to be game after game. Uh we just we aren't we aren't really yet, yet to see. The um the finished product from from Madrid, but he is again. He's only twenty three. Is he twenty three years of age? He's only young. Twenty three. The whole career ahead of him, and we've got him until he's like thirty one anyway. So we've got plenty of time <laughs> to mould him. But those are some of my reasons, or my five reasons uh, that we, or five things that we learned uh, from Aston Villa's two two draw against Chelsea. Um, let me know what you thought. Am I harsh on Mudrick? I'm trying not to be. I'm trying to be constructive in my criticism. Um, let me know what you thought about Caicedo's performance. Uh, Villa's injuries, did it make an impact on the game and help us? I think it definitely did. Uh, VAR, let me know your thoughts on that now that you've had time to reflect on it. And um, yeah, defensive errors, always, always a factor with Chelsea. But again, please do like the video, subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified of any future content on the channel. With that said, as always, my name is Harry. I'm Chelsea and peace.